we're on to our first speaker, Juan Benet. Uh, while I don't think Juan needs an introduction in this context, he is the inventor of, of the interplanetary file system, uh, IPFS, and the Filecoin, and he is, of course, the founder of Protocol Labs. He studied computer science, uh, science sorry, <laughs> at Stanford, uh, and he is obsessed with knowledge, science, and technology. So take it away, Juan. Thanks so much for the, for the intro, George. So hey, it's an honor to be uh, here with you uh, two years after the first consensus day uh, where we kind of like had a very small event um, uh, a while back. And a uh, uh, you know, huge thank you to the organizers for, uh, for creating the, the next uh, iteration of this event. I wanted to kind of um, have a, one small note here that uh, that day, two years ago, we kind of like formalized the SSLE open problem and we published an RFP. Uh, and you know, that's probably the biggest success of that conference, which is that now, two years later, many published solutions exist, which is uh, pretty sweet. Uh, so, uh, and when I was looking at the agenda for uh, for this uh, consensus day, uh, it's really cool to see uh, so many sessions that like directly address a bunch of the things that we were talking about as potential things that that would be interesting uh, directions and consensus in the future. So I, I highlighted a few uh, here that just directly touch on, on stuff. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome to see all of the amazing work that uh, got presented yesterday um, and super excited for all the all the amazing stuff coming, uh, coming here uh, today. So, uh, and I can't wait, of course, for uh, Consensus A22 uh, next year. So looking forward to an even uh, greater event that, uh, then. And, you know, thank you very much for all the organizers for putting all of this together and and for, to all the speakers for um, uh, sharing their, their thoughts. Uh, so what I wanted to do today is just talk about three things. Uh, one, I talk, wanted to talk about Consensus R&D Horizon. So this is uh, why it makes, uh, wh why we're still sort of like in what I think um, sort of like the middle, early to middle uh, range of, of research in, in consensus and blockchains. I think there's a lot uh, still to come. Uh, and this is a, a really fruitful field where, where there's many new uh, discoveries to be made. And it's pretty important and, and valuable for, uh, for, for the world to do this. And so I'll kind of talk about that. Um, I want to talk about some open problems. Uh, this is kind of uh, a few things that, that are not, not well, where there, there seem to be a lot of low-hanging fruit. Um, and then uh, I want to talk about uh, kind of uh, some of the work that we have uh, upcoming. This is more on the engineering side. Uh, so this is less on, on, on the uh, research side and more, more on the uh, engineering and, and actually kind of productizing or, or productionizing and then productizing uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that we've been, we've been working on. Uh, so I like using this image from, and this is you know, uh, a little bit outdated now, but this is just a, a rough overview of what happens on the internet uh, in one minute. Um, here on the left, and and uh, this is on the right. I think is like per day. Um, so this this is just a send this this is to give you a sense of a staggering scale uh, of Web two. This is an enormous amount of objects. Um, a lot of these things are pretty large uh, objects. So think think of videos and YouTube as being being large things, and a ton of the the interactions across uh, the world that happen um, use today eventual consistency and standard database techniques. Um, but overall, they they tend to reach consistency faster than many blockchains do today. Um, and of course, most users on the planet expect a, ve a very hard level of, um, of consistency in, in, in their use of the applications, right? So if somebody uh, likes a post or retweets a thing and so on, they definitely expect that to, to stick around. Uh, now, Web3 needs to be able, for Web3 to really work uh, and for blockchains to really work, uh, we have to reach this kind of scale of computation. We have to reach to this level of uh, being able to de deal with these kinds of workloads. And um, uh, just looking also at, at some other uh, kind of cloud systems, you can sort of uh, see the staggering scale that this might mean when you think about kind of the amount of storage that that um, that, that is stored um, by by lots of different kinds of applications, or the amounts of objects that 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 amount of storage uh, represents. So we're dealing with an enormous amount of of data, an enormous amount of transactions, and so on. Uh, so I think that today um, the scale of of blockchains is just orders of magnitude away from what where it needs to be. I don't think uh, protocols can handle proper internet transaction volumes. Um, I think there are no you know, very serious internet scale applications yet. Um, a lot of the asset trading that is happening is, is small relative to, um, to, to the larger, um, larger uh, uh, spaces for trading and so on. And um, payments are still not, not as good as, 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 uh, as, as the, the cloud-oriented uh, global payment systems. Uh, and you know, today, no protocols can really ha handle mission-critical deployments. So this means 
Uh, most deployments cannot really handle network partitions. If you're in a country that loses internet connectivity, your host, you can't really interact with blockchains for the most part. Um, uh, you cannot really be in, in delayed uh, tolerant networks. So, so if you um, are in an environment that has large latencies, you can't really interact either. Um, and you know, if there's some like major internet outage and there's like some big split, um, a lot of the chains um, you know, would, would, would struggle. Uh, I think, uh, thankfully, we have pretty good systems and, and a lot of them would, would recover gracefully, um, but they would definitely struggle for a while and a lot of systems would sort of like break in, in the middle. Uh, and I think in terms of like transaction, transactional throughput, um, you know, I think even the next generation blockchains that are getting developed now are not even close to what we need. Um, I think we need on the order of, of billions to trillions of transactions per second. And, uh, and and really kind of the way we're gonna get there, I think is through through things like sharding. And Marco already talked about a lot of this in, in um, the talk yesterday uh, and kind of what we're working on, the, on, on this. Uh, one of the other pieces here is that a lot of the layer two approaches so far, um, especially when people try to do off-chain type stuff. So not quite the, the layer two consensus chains, but when people try to do off-chain type of, type of things, um, those things are extremely complex and difficult to use. Um, and I just don't think it, they're likely to be uh, successful ways for, um, for building blockchain applications. I think um, the, the approaches of scaling with consensus and scaling to um, blockchains that, that are able to, to deal with much larger transactional throughput uh, will end up working, uh, working better. Um, and so I think this is kind of like layer twos and, and beyond, and also blockchains that can then have uh, sharding within themselves. And one other thing that I think is pretty relevant, a lot of the blockchain protocols that we're seeing today are not at the level of quality in terms of specification as the kind of standard IETF protocols that, are, that we're all used to, to relying on, things like IP, BGP, DNS, and so on. Um, and so there's a, there's a long road ahead to really turn a lot of the blockchain protocols that we're used to today into really dependable parts of the, um, parts of the internet. Uh, just you know, to give a sense of, um, of it in terms of, uh, you know, from Falkland's perspective, um, we want to get to you know zettabytes of storage, and, and we already have exabytes of storage. We want to get to zettabytes in the in the um, relatively near future. We want to be able to have like trillions of deals. Um, we want to have a lot of um, computation over the data, uh, and we want to have all kinds of other applications on top. And we want to get to this level of kind of partition tolerance and and horizontal scaling um, that lets us kind of uh, enable regions to to operate and be able to disconnect from the rest of the world for for periods of time. So all of what I just mentioned is you know, stuff that um, I think many um, papers are tackling and many groups are, are kind of starting to work on the prototype uh, solutions for, but there aren't yet uh, large scale solutions uh, that are deployed. Uh, but the good news is that you know, uh, it tends to be that computing platforms refine over time and you know, we come up with new great ideas and we deploy them. Uh, so there's a lot, lot of work ahead, but, uh, but we can do it. Uh, and so I like using kind of this, this target where we can sort of see security and scalability on, on, on these two axes and sort of place the, the next generation chains, you know, slightly further up in the scalability pathway, um, but very far away from, from the target. Um, so I think we need, we have a several orders of magnitude to, uh, to improve. Uh, and this could be like a leapfrog. So it could be that in, you know, two years we hit the target, or this could be um, a slower uh, process where we kind of maybe add one or two hours at a time uh, for, for a few years. Uh, and just to, you know, to give you a sense, uh, in, uh, Falcon is about to turn uh, one year old. And just in this, in this space, we now have a, a large amount of, of storage to deal with. Uh, we have a pretty saturated blockchain. Um, we are pumping tons of proofs through it. And uh, we already need, are hitting kind of scaling requirements. Um, and we haven't even begun to tap into uh, what happens when you add computation on top of the data, uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, you already uh, discussed kind of consensus as the bottleneck of decentralized systems, and Marco went into that. Um, some of the other stuff that we've been uh, thinking about is kind of blockchain computation models. Uh, how do you do kind of cross shard invocations? Um, how how does that then translate into systems that enable enable you to kind of couple consensus to uh, job schedulers in the you know, sort of traditional sense, uh, distributed systems in, in the cloud uh, have solved a lot of these scaling problems and with really good solutions. So uh, let's try and use um, uh, some of that, those techniques and, uh, and apply them here. And so kind of what we're headed towards is some of this kind of storage and computation platform. Um, and the, the good news is look, we can borrow from a lot of the standard distributed systems uh, techniques to, to get there. Uh, 
these are sort of the properties that I think are required for for consensus protocols to be uh, to be really great. Uh, so, you know, trillions of transactions per second, um, fast local finality where where you can do um, you know very fast. Uh, uh, we can commit transactions uh, in a in a locality um, and have some kind of regional regional shards of some sort, um, and maybe those those are kind of in in some hierarchy up uh, geographically uh, all the way uh, to kind of like an earth level consensus. Um, you want to be able to kind of be safe against national state attackers. Um, you want the uh, scaling of the of the of the um, regions and so on to meet the demand of users, and so kind of be economically motivated. Uh, and you want to be partition tolerant. There's all kinds of other things that we can probably um, add here, but the sort of I think things that are required for uh, for blockchains to really reach uh, internet scale. Um, and so that means th a lot of consensus work uh, needs to happen. Uh, there's some other properties that I think are, are also valuable in terms of getting blockchains to be uh, kind of foundational internet protocols. And so this means this is a lot of design work in the protocol space. So simplicity of the core use, uh, generality, modularity, layering, um, you know, all standard um, uh, in good inter internet protocol design uh, design stuff. Uh, but I think it, that's fine if it comes later. I think it, it, it it's totally um, acceptable and good for systems to, to develop um, uh, first and, and get to to high quality use and, and high quality production use levels. And then after the, after we figure out exactly what things should look like, then at that point sort of refine them into, uh, into the right shape. So, you know, new ideas are here needed. It won't be easy, but it'll definitely be transformative to, uh, to break all these, break through the barrier uh, in the bottleneck and, and kind of um, help, have a lot of really great, great applications. Uh, so I'll touch a little bit on, on some open problems. Uh, I'll maybe just breeze through these and then, and then get to uh, some of the kind of engineer work that might be useful for you. Uh, so I think bootstrap in general across these protocols tend to be tends to be uh, way under uh, unspecified. Uh, it tends to be insecure in, in a lot of systems, um, and this is a pretty difficult problem in peer to peer. The sort of not quite an impossibility result, but a, but just an acknowledgement that, that it's an extremely difficult problem to to do some kind of secure bootstrap over the internet when you um, don't have information sharing. Um, but I think it is that there are probably good systems that um, at least uh, greatly level up the security. Um, and that it should be deployed because now nowadays people are depending on these blockchains for massive amounts of value and and their bootstrap systems are not actually good enough and and you could quite um you could mount some like pretty serious attacks on many of them not all of them i think a, a few of them especially uh bitcoin have survived attacks like that um but not all blockchains uh, have really solved this bootstrap problem um the second one is is around kind of the broadcast channel or or the gossip channel for transactions. Uh, this layer is just not very secure. Uh, there's been a number of papers already about this and 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 so on. But again, uh, those things haven't really made it into production use uh, at larger scales, and it it really seems like a, an area ripe for uh, um, for attacks of, of at a large scale. So this is ISPs and nation states can definitely attack attack those layers. Um, and, the, and it seems like if we focus on that area and we solve it with um, strong uh, distributed systems primitives or, or cryptographic primitives, we could lean into um, you know, things like Byzantine broadcast. And if we do Byzantine broadcast in the transactional layer, then maybe consensus is not required at a higher layer. And so maybe if you do Byzantine broadcast in that layer, uh, maybe you can get... Um, uh, you, you can clear transactions uh, in, a, in a kind of a different way. Uh, and, it, and there are a few projects that are sort of like headed in this direction and are starting to uh, layer these pieces. But again, the, they haven't been productionized and deployed at scale. So um, uh, def definitely promising work, but, but I think it'd be really amazing to see one of the major blockchains start to, start to adopt this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, this was uh, said yesterday, um, and, and it was really cool to see a, a talk about this. Um, but I think in general, just mempools tend to be overlooked, just how... Um, Transactions are are described in in mempools and how they are cleared. Algorithms for for distributing them, um, uh, for linking them, and, and so on. Like the DAG mempool idea was like really really cool. Um, I think there's probably a lot of other things that could be done here, um, and you know, sort of couples with a broadcast channel. Uh, there's also things around. Oh, and by the way, the mempools are going to get way more complicated once you have uh, applications that do um, computation across many shards. So. Um, now, once we deal with massive scale of computation and massive scale of transactions, the mempools are going to get way harder to deal with. So um, they haven't been much of a problem so far, but but they're definitely going to become a much bigger bigger thing thing to work on. Um, the next thing that I think is really important to do 
is that we need to get blockchains to be proper asynchronous protocols. Uh, the blockchains of today are not asynchronous. They tend to be, uh, they tend to have a number of like, um, uh, they are either completely synchronous protocols or they're kind of like in, in a partial synchrony setting or they're so, they pretend to be asynchronous, but they're not really because they have some estimators. So for example, like um, um, uh, Bitcoin in, 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 in the Nakamoto consensus doesn't quite embed time in the, in, in the, in the actual kind of like proof of work calculation and so on. But there's time embedded in the in the estimator of power, um, in like kind of like the, the two week retargeting and so on. So there's kind of a synchronous assumption there. It's it's much weaker, which is which is great, um, but but it's still not not um, uh, not perfect. And I think it would be really amazing to be able to get to at least one or two blockchains at large scale that are deployed that are fully asynchronous and and able to tolerate massive massive failures of, of the internet. Um, the the econ like major economies should not depend on perfect connectivity, and and if they do, then then they're kind of in, in, in some ways. Uh, the last thing I'll mention here is um, VDFs. Uh, so VDFs are kind of around the corner. There's like good designs. Um, there's some hardware that the people are starting to develop. And this will be really good for randomness, um, for anchoring chains, for anchoring proofs and other kind of artifacts. Um, and it'd be really, really great to kind of um, get to a really low AMAX VDF so that we can then um, start using them in, 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 uh, in blockchains. I'll mention two other kind of families of work. So I think we're now approaching the area of being able to do kind of like EC2 style or Amazon Lambda style um, uh, computation in blockchains. Uh, this is a pretty difficult thing to do because people can't deal with um, the kind of like uh, three part, you need sort of confidentiality, verifiability, and high performance. Um, and th those three things are pretty hard to get. And so most of the computation and layer twos and so on and rollups that people are doing uh, tend to give up on one of those, usually performance. Um, but I think for, for us to really reach internet scale computation, we're going to have to enable really high performance applications. And so the, the, the cost that we pay is going to have to be bounded by, I don't know, like a factor of five or maybe 10, um, but certainly not, you know, um, uh, what it is now. And so I think, uh, but I think we're getting in, into the realm of being able to do this. Uh, and so I think it'd be, it'd be really great to, to start seeing blockchains that, that tackle this, this problem. Um, and consensus matters here because um, most of these systems uh, deployed around the world tend to rely on consensus as one of the critical components to be able to schedule the jobs and, and so on. And by the way, I think uh, uh, homomorphic encryption is probably gonna um, uh, start appearing uh, finally. Like the, uh, the, Again, performance not quite there yet, but um, in the blockchain space, it, it might actually make sense to do um, uh, uh, FHE. Uh, there's a really cool project that that actually has a type of FHE that maps well to machine learning. So you can actually do um, private machine learning in blockchains in like a not too crazy performance setting, uh, which is which is pretty exciting. Uh, and then uh, there's also kind of um, uh, zk snark computation that's that's coming around the corner. Uh, the other version of this is databases. So um, just like we can do um, job scheduling and so on to kind of like deal with the, the traditional kind of uh, issuing computation jobs uh, and kind of really build, build that part of the cloud. Blockchains don't yet look like databases. Uh, there's a few projects that have uh, tackled this and tried to create it, but they haven't really gotten strong adoption yet. Um, and there's sort of like a gap that might be a product gap, might be a, a, a systems gap. It's not really quite clear. But most of the applications on the planet tend to use these kinds of uh, database abstractions. Uh, and so for, for us to really kind of, for Web3 to really uh, enable Web2 to, to migrate over, um, Somewhere along the way, we'll have to have blockchains with consensus, with transactional, with, with you know standard transactions, and then some standard um, database uh, type of um, interfaces. And this is where kind of you know privacy will really matter uh, for for a lot of a lot of applications require privacy. And so um, the layer two is that that kind of couple high throughput, high performance with uh, privacy um, might might be really well positioned to kind of. Uh, solve this kind of database problem. And I think this kind of thing uh, is going to be really, really impactful. Uh, cool. So I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a uh, brief into kind of um, some of the things we're, we're up to. Uh, PL in general uh, is trying to drive breakthroughs in computing um, uh, to push humanity forward. Uh, we're working on a number of things, uh, Falcon, IPFS, Liquid PM, number of projects. Uh, we have a, we work with a number of labs and, and so on. The way that we approach research is that we tend to think of kind of this whole pipeline from basic research all the way through um, uh, refining a, uh, an idea to kind of 
um, really productizing it and getting it into, uh, into something that you can actually use some kind of like um, gadget or piece of software or product that you can you can deploy uh, and then where people people can actually use the use the tech. Uh, we tend to see the world as, and, and this is sort of like based on a, a, a looking at a lot of industrial labs and, and so on, and, and kind of the, the, the actual process of technology trans translation, most of the research, most of the research and development that happens to projects tends to happen after the, the, um, the great core insight. So it tends to be the sort of academic credit sort of goes primarily to sort of like the core insights um, and not really to kind of like all of the hard work and, and, and slog that I did this to refine a, a core insight into something that's actually broadly usable um, and that it's going to be kind of like fit uh, problems uh, very well. Uh, so we took, tried to approach this, this R&D process of, of getting things uh, th through this translation pipeline uh, all the way into, um, into the market. And this is how you can actually uh, sort of accelerate the rate of progress. Uh, you heard from RP yesterday on Consensus Lab and, and all the exciting uh, stuff that we're, that we're doing there. Um, we're also looking at you know this blockchain computation models that, that I was describing. Uh, we're looking at things like you know snarks and scaling uh, proofs and and starting to uh, um, do kind of a computation with with snarks and so on. Uh, so sorry, pretty general computation with snarks. And um, I think Falcon right now is still the largest deployed CK snark network uh, today. So that's a pretty pretty uh, interesting thing. Uh, some of the engineering things that we have uh, in the pipeline include we're, we're starting to think about what smart contracts on platform would look like. There's a number of groups working on this at the moment, and we're, we're sort of uh, discussing and 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 con uh, converging on what would be a, a good a good uh, solution. We're kind of evaluating a, a WASM-oriented runtime where we can plug in other um, runtimes like EVM and so on, uh, and we would have IPLD as a native uh, component, so you could have content address code. Uh, directly there. And we want to do kind of cross ch uh, chain invocations in kind of the Erlang actor model. Uh, so you can sort of reason about the, the cross chain invocations easily. Uh, we want to develop kind of a rapid prototyping framework for blockchains. Uh, we're sort of extracting a lot of the uh, code from uh, Lotus into a thing called Utico, uh, which is kind of like a more general version of the flower Lotus um, that, that can enable kind of rapid prototyping with Consensus Lab. Um, and if that is successful, if that, if, if that um, project ends up being a, a, a pretty usable platform for others, uh, beyond us, uh, that this might be like a useful tool for for everybody here uh, to be able to kind of prototype their new um, uh, consensus protocols and so on. Just kind of drop in a replacement consensus protocol into a full blockchain node that you can deploy and, and test with. Uh, it's kind of early days still, but uh, this this could be promising over time. Uh, and like Marcus said uh, before, like there, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, there's everything from kind of grants and RFPs. Uh, uh, we tend to be highly collaborative, so so we give a lot of grants and we post RFPs. Um, we work with a number of other uh, groups. Uh, also, we have a number of open positions in in Consensus Lab, and that's growing. So if you're interested in joining us, uh, definitely uh, uh, talk to us. Uh, and if you if you if your system and project is reaching a, a spot where it, it might um, go into adoption, um, we can also be helpful here. So so we a, a whole range of what we do is help technology get adopted. So if you're starting to think about product productizing or use cases and so on, uh, we can be useful there as well. Uh, great, so uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.